thanks for joining us again uh, for the seventh and final edition of the Angus Essentials webinar series. Good to see a number of those names joining us tonight that uh, that have uh, joined us for all seven uh, webinars. So thank you for your support. And for those joining us for the first time, welcome um, to the series. My name is Jake Phillips. I'm the Extension Manager at Angus Australia, and it gives me great pleasure um, to welcome you along tonight. Um, just a just a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you do have any questions or anything tonight, please put them in the chat. Um, I will be monitoring that. And of course, we will have time at the end um, to go through any questions or points of clarification that you do require. Um, that's why we are here. And um, of course, uh, for those of you that have joined us before, um, uh, you'll know this, but uh, for those for the first time, we do really appreciate feedback um, on all of these um, events and webinars so we can make um, the next edition of those uh, more tailored to to what, you, um, what you're enjoying and make sure that you're getting something worthwhile out of it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Diana Wood tonight, who is the Marketing and Communications Manager at Angus Australia um, and has been involved in the Angus business for a very long time um, and has been a very cherished employee of Angus Australia. Um, now, Diana, not stealing any of her thunder, but she works in the space of um, marketing and communications. And we've worked through this webinar series right from the background of, of basic genetics and understanding um, through our taste um, recording and, and um, performance evaluation um, parts of the business. We've also um, spoken about um, genotyping. We've looked at how to run a successful AI program. Um, and now that brings us to uh, the pointy end of, um, of the business, which is actually selling and marketing um, your cattle that you've you've born and raised and, um, and have ready for sale. So Diana's gonna take us through some of the need to know components um, for uh, new or established breeders in that space. So without any further ado, welcome, Diana. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jake. Not a worry. It's great to be here. Um, as Jake said, uh, we're basically at the pointy end now. You've done all that hard work um, with your breeding, um, submitting your taste data, and, of course, uh, working through DNA, genomics, um, and all those other bits and pieces. So it's really great to be here tonight to um, come up Oh, I guess, present to you that final step, um, which is selling your genetics. So thanks, Jake. Fantastic, Di. And um, and I see uh, Sam Hamilton has joined us as well. So we might hear from Sam a little bit a little bit later. But um, uh, thanks to you and your team for this presentation. Uh, part of this presentation um, is pre-recorded and we'll, we'll go through that part now. But of course, um, if there's any questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, this, this presentation goes for roughly about half an hour and, and we're keen to field any inquiries that you might have. So um, without any further ado, we, um, we might get stuck into it. So thank you for joining Sam and I tonight as we take you through some sale preparation tips and tricks to not only help you with your sale catalogue production, but I guess to also highlight that some of the other ways these services can actually be utilised so that everyone understands that the catalogue services actually do provide marketing opportunities for all of our members. Um, what I would like to say though, before we get too far into this, that with regards to the Angus Essentials series, is that if you haven't already, it would be really good to go back and watch each of the other presentations that have taken place up to this point, as each of these processes really do actually have an impact on your sale catalogue production. So when we are looking at our sales side of things, we do know that for most seed stock operations, bull sale day is obviously the culmination of a couple of years of planning and hard work. So the big question is, have you actually got all of the information at hand that you need ready to ensure smooth preparation of your sale catalog? And what we're actually hoping to achieve tonight is having each of you go away with A, a clearer understanding of what services are available to you and B, a clearer picture of what is what it is that you need to do to ensure a smooth process. So with tonight's program, we'll take you through an introduction to what it is with Angus Select um, and how our catalogues actually interact with Angus Select, um, as well as some of the usage statistics around our online catalogues, the catalogue services available, some handy hints and preparation tips, frequently asked questions, We'll also have a look at the advertising opportunities available with Angus Australia outside catalogues. And of course, um, ultimately who you should contact when it comes to um, utilising these services. 
So probably one of the main things I would like to highlight before we get into this is that the online listing of any catalogue is actually an integral part of the services and it does mean that your listing will be included as part of the Angus Select suite of tools. Now Jake did go through the use of Angus Select in an earlier edition of Angus Essentials so as I've previously stated it would be really good if you could go back and watch or re-watch any of those previous editions uh, because as I said they do have such an impact on the production of catalogues down the track. But what I do briefly want to say for a quick introduction to Angus Select for those who may not have uh, watch that previous edition is that Angus Select actually has the ability to allow users to search across all sale catalogues and semen catalogues. So if your listing is online with Angus Australia, your animals are, and genetics, sorry, will be included as part of this search function. And keep in mind that the Angus Australia website and Angus Select as part of Angus Tech is online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, meaning that your bulls, females, semen and embryos for sale can be searched for and seen at any time. So I'll just quickly show you where Angus Select is on the Angus Australia website. If you go through here, you can obviously look at all the individual catalogues as well, but our main thing we're looking at is our sales select and semen select. So that when you do list your animals on, um, say for sale, for example, you can actually go into sales select and see that you can do some searches across all catalogues at any one time. That lists all the catalogues available there located in either Australia or New Zealand. Um, and in this area, you can put in some criteria around your searches. So animal details, breeding, genetic tests, some EBV criteria, you can put in selection indexes, for example. And when you put that information in, it'll actually pull animals up across every catalog that fit your criteria. So that means if your catalog is online with Angus Australia, well then obviously that's a really great, I guess, tool to ensure that people are having an opportunity to search your catalog. Following on from our look at Angus Select and before we get into the nitty gritty of the catalogue services that Angus Australia offers, I just wanted to highlight the statistics around the usage of our online catalogues just to give you an idea of the growth we are experiencing in views as more and more people do go online to search the Angus genetics they're wishing to purchase. As you can see, we've had over 247,000 searches across our Angus Select catalogue searches. Um, up until towards the end of September this year, which equates to a 10% growth in catalogue searches year on year from 2021. So it really does highlight that now more than ever, people are going online to search for their next bull, female or genetics they wish to purchase. And probably just like um, doing some research for a car or a house or anything else you're looking to buy and spend a bit of money on, people do want to do their research first. They want to look these animals up and they want to find them in a really easy area where they can look at pedigree and EBVs and selection indexes and things like that. So it really is a great resource for members to use. So who can use Angus Australia's sale catalogue services? And really before I pass over to Sam, I guess I do wanna ask the question is that did you know that Angus Australia's catalogue services are not just for members hosting auction sales? I guess the most important thing to note here is that members selling bulls and females privately or whom have semen or embryos for sale are actually encouraged to include those listings on Angus Select. For example, you might be part of one of the beef weeks around the country and want to provide a comprehensive list of the animals you have on show for potential clients, or you might be wishing to sell excess embryos you have. It's actually a great way to promote a list of bulls, females, semen or embryos you have for sale, all collated in one area that can be easily shared. And of course, most importantly, these lists show all the details anyone needs to know about animals or genetics you do have for sale, including images and or videos that you actually might um, be included with your listing. Just for example here, if we have a quick look at some catalogues that are listed online, you can see we've got animals for sale, semen for sale, embryos for sale, and we also include our side benchmarking catalogues. But if we just click on animals for sale there, you can see that we have both auction sales and private treaty sales listed. So as we said, you don't have to be conducting an auction to list your catalogue with Angus Australia. Following our introduction, I'll now pass on to Sam Hamilton, our Marketing Officer for Sale Catalogues, to take you through the services that we do offer members of Angus Australia. So what sale catalogue services are available? We have the semen or embryo service, the standard catalogue service, customised catalogue service, and the full design service. So I'll go through these in a bit more detail so you have a bit more of an understanding to what service is and what's involved. Semen or embryo service. 
This service is generally used a lot by our semen companies, but is becoming a lot more popular amongst our members. Generally, what members can do is they can have their sale lots, and then a lot of them are now combining semen and embryo lots into their sale catalogs. So this section is where those semen and embryo lots will appear. Generally, we link it to one another so that it's easy to find and locate. So the lots are added to the Angus Select and Catalog section on the website. You can display animal photo and a YouTube link online for those animals. Online catalog is also promoted on our Angus Australia social media pages, so Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The catalog can be listed online for 12 months, but it can be less if you would like. And the cost to list it online is $22 per animal, including reference size. However, if it's a combined sale with sale lots, generally we just charge the $6.60 per listing just for the fact that it's only going to be listed for a short amount of time, not for the full 12 months. Standard catalogue service. This service is quite popular amongst our members for the fact that the information is pre-filled and they can receive these PDFs within a timely manner, normally around two to three days. These templates are generated through our Angus Tech on the website, so there's no need for us to go in and make any changes or do anything extra. So what's included in the standard catalogue service? The lots are added to the Angus Select and the Catalogue section on our website. You can display animal photos and YouTube links. We provide you with a CSV data extract, including your reference size. You have a choice of downloadable standard template PDFs. We have four available, and those four cater for different requirements for our members. In those templates, they are black and white, and they also include the new $A and $AL index. You will receive a standard quick EBV table, online catalogue promoted on our social media pages, and the cost for this service is $6.60 per animal, including your reference size. Customised catalogue service. This service is generally for those members that like to do something a little bit different with their templates for their sale lots. Normally what we see a lot of is people adding colour, removing generations from their pedigree, removing EBVs, or they decide to add in additional information like raw structural data, the date of birth in months, or any other information that they might like to include for their animals. So what's included in the service? Your sale lots are added to the Angus Select and Catalogue section on our website. You can display an animal photo or YouTube link online for those particular animals. If you would like, we can also include the photo of those animals within your sale lots in the PDF. We can do a QR code for YouTube links as well and include that in your template for your PDF. With this, you can also include semen and embryo lots. I touched earlier on the semen and embryo lots being combined with sale lots, so this is where this comes into play. Customizable templates. As I mentioned before, we can opt out certain bits of information. Shading of the EBVs is becoming a lot more popular, so please bear in mind that this is a manual process and that it will take us some time to manually go through and shade individually each EBV in the template. Your online catalogue promoted on the Angus Australia social media pages. Quick summary table, which is customised. So if you've opted out particular EBVs, we can also take those EBVs out of your quick summary table as well. You can also shade this quick summary table, but then please note there is extra time needed to be doing that. The cost is $6.60 per animal, including your reference size, and then the $99 per hour design time to make those changes and those additions for your particular catalogue. Full Design Catalogue Service. It's quite easy to see from the dot points there why this service has grown so much within the last 12 months is because you get a lot of bang for your buck for what we offer. So what do we offer? We add your sale lots on our Angus Select and Catalogue section on the website. We can display your animal photo in your YouTube link online. As I mentioned before, we can also add your photo or a QR code for that YouTube link within your physical catalogue as well. We have the ability to include semen and embryo lots. As I also mentioned for customizable catalogues, we can include the semen and embryo lots in with your physical sale lots and make a combined catalogue. Individual lot design. If you have an idea of how you would like your sale lots to be presented in your catalogue and have an idea for a template, send that through to us and we can create it for you. Or we can also create one for you and then work with you to get it to look how you would like it to. Cover to cover design. As it says, front cover to back cover, we can design the entirety of the catalogue. You just send us the information and the images and if you have an idea to how you want it to look, just let us know and we can do our best to create that for you. We publish the catalogues on issue and then we can also send you through a link so that you can put this on your social media pages if you would like, email it through to your mates or your clients or through to your agent. And they should be able to go on there, view the entirety of the catalogue and they can also download it via this issue link too. We can organise the printing if required. 
we have a printer that we use, we find the quality quite good and we're very happy with it. So we always send our members catalogs to this particular printer and the feedback's been nothing but amazing from them. We can promote your catalog on our Angus Australia social media pages. So not just your online sale listing we promote, we also promote the physical catalog once it's been compiled and approved. So we'll take a photo of the cover and put that on our social media pages and pump it a bit and try and get members who want more exposure for their catalog so there's a bit more interest. We can customise a quick summary EBV table. So like I said again for the customised one, we can go through, remove EBVs, we can shade sale lot, we can shade the EBVs. Customised quick summary EBV table. Like I mentioned before in the customised catalogue section is that we can remove EBVs for this one, we can shade the EBVs. If you want to include raw structural data along with this, we can add that on the end of it, it's not an issue. The cost for this service is $6.60 per animal, including your reference size, and then the $99 per hour design time. So adding photos and videos to your individual animals on Angus Tech, it actually gives the user the full experience to inspect your cattle, even if they can't be there in person. Part of the catalogue service that's actually offered by Angus Australia does allow you to load images and videos to the individual animals, meaning that when a prospective client does click through to view the details on one of your animals, they can actually view that animal from the comfort of their own home. So we're just going to show you an example here on a catalogue. As you can see, there's a video icon. If there were photos as well, there'd also be a camera icon sitting next to there. But if you click on this animal, um, it'll just show up here in the summary details that there's a video available. But you can also click on the photos and videos section. And again, if there was an image available as well, that would sit there next to this video. So that just shows you how this displays on a catalogue or an individual animal. Now that Sam and I have taken you through the actual services that Angus Australia does offer uh, when it comes to putting catalogues together with Angus Australia and looking at the photos and videos, the next thing we really want to touch on, which is ultimately the most important part of your sale catalogue production, is what you can be doing at home in preparation for your sale. And the biggest thing we can say is to obviously plan ahead. There's a lot that goes into this, and I know I've already said it in in the previous part of this webinar, but it is really important, and I'd really recommend going back and looking at the other Angus Essentials webinars that we have done, because as I said, each of those elements contribute immensely to getting ready for your sale catalogue and getting all your preparation into place. There's so much that goes into it, and by doing all of these things, it'll certainly make a much easier process for you down the track. Sam is now actually going to take you through some of the nitty gritty with regards to being prepared. So what can you do as a member to prepare yourself for your sale? First point there, ensure your animals are active and registered on the database. It's quite important that you make sure that your animals are active and registered and the information on those animals are all correct prior to sending through your information for your catalogue because there is nothing worse than when you send through your sale lots and you've got animals that are unregistered, they're pending, and the information's not correct, i.e. dam or sire for the particular animal is not correct and you need to try and sort it out and you want your catalogue gone to your printer by the end of the week. And there's a lot of things that need to happen in order to sort those animals out. So sometimes it's quick fix, sometimes it's not. So hence why it's mentioned there to ensure that they're active and registered and to make sure the information is correct on those animals because it can be a chain reaction where it could be a quick fix or it could be something that'll end up leading to supplying DNA for certain animals, which leads me to the next point, all DNA. Performance records and structural information is to be submitted in advance. Going back to the first point, DNA will more than likely be needed on animals for any changes that are made, which is what I'm going to highlight how the importance of submitting that DNA well and truly in advance before your sale. I'm talking maybe six months in advance for your sale because you need to allow that time for the DNA to actually be sent to the office, go to the lab, and then for the labs to do their testing and do what they need to do and then send us back the information. In saying that, you also need to keep in mind by the time we get that information back, it also needs to coincide with when an EBV run's going to be. So whether that's going to be before an EBV run or after. So it's really and truly a bit of a lengthy process. So it's not like a two month thing that members can get away with a lot of the time. So that's why it's important to submit it well and truly in advance because there is some occurrences that happen that will cause delays, you know, such as, you know, you can send a TSU in and it can be dry and you'll have to get another one. You can send in a hair sample and it might not be enough and you might need to send more. Or the worst case scenario is you'll have a lot of no results on your sale animals and you'll need to provide more samples for them. 
So this all takes time to get this information together. So that's why you need to give yourself as much lead time as you can to sort out issues as they arise prior to your sale because if they happen at your sale, there's a high chance that those particular animals that you want to sell won't be able to be listed in your catalogue because their information won't be complete because you're waiting for DNA or EBVs or such. We'll highlight the importance of submitting all this information in the next slide, Die We'll go and highlight a bit more about it and explain a bit more and go into detail about the information and a timeline for you all. Next point, read and understand the sale catalogue agreement. This is important. It is quite important to make sure you read and understand the agreement as there are a lot of points in there that if they are not adhered to can have some repercussions and we're talking legally as well. Previously there has been catalogues that I've seen where information has been not included and as a result information being misleading has gone to a legal matter. So that's not good for the member, the purchaser or us in Australia. So that's why it's important to make sure that you read the agreement as it sets out some guidelines. So it's certain information you do include and what you don't really have to and bits and pieces just to ensure that you know you're doing what you can as a seller to ensure that the product that you're selling you've advertised everything that's to be known about it so that if anything ever comes back to say bite you you can turn around and say well all the information was there and it's all correct at the time so you know buy beware kind of thing next point there complete the angus australia catalog and advertising request form that can be downloaded from our website or if you just send us an email we can send that through you it's quite important that you fill this request form out and send it through to us with your sale lots and then any additional information. If this information isn't all sent through at the same time, it can actually lead to delays in your catalogue. So if you send it all through in one big hit, there's no delays and we can get to processing it ASAP. Enter your sale lots onto the correct Excel spreadsheet. We have available on the website an Excel spreadsheet and we can send it through to members if they would like to an Excel spreadsheet. And it has in it fields for what are members to fill in, such as lot number, animal full ident in comments. We ask that members do not add to this, do not deviate from it for the pure fact that we load this directly into our database. So if there's any additional information and fields and things aren't filled out correctly, we're going to send it back to you and ask you to do it again because if it doesn't load properly through on our end, we're not obliged to go in and make additions and fix things for you. It's not that hard to complete, so make sure you fill it out properly as it is on the Excel spreadsheet, please. Submit your form, sale lots, and any additional information that is to be included in your catalogue. Example, actual weights, date of birth in months, raw data, highlights on particular lots, etc. So I did touch on this one with the advertising request form. Basically, submit all the information that you would like for your catalogue altogether. It makes it a bit easier for us and we have everything we need. So once we've scheduled your catalogue in to begin production, when we actually get to your catalogue, everything's there that we need and we're not emailing you back and forth asking where's this, where's that. We can get into it, get it done and get a draft through to you as soon as possible. And it also stops the delays there as well. So if you've got a deadline that you need to meet and we've got one we need to meet too, having all this information already there readily available does help us a lot and it will help you a lot too in the turnaround time for your catalogue to be produced. So I'm following on now from what Sam has highlighted with regards to preparation. On the screen now, you can see a, a guideline timeline that we've put together to help you work back from your sale with the aim of having your catalogue released approximately one month from when your sale is going to take place. Now, realistically, I should point out that this timeline is based on the best case scenario for submission and that's just suggesting that if, if everything goes according to plan, then this is a timeline that you can look to work towards. But it does just give you a bit of an indication. I will stress to further to what Sam says, it's so important to allow yourself enough time to sort everything out in relation to your sale catalogue. Um, Sam mentioned, you know, look at doing your DNA about six months out from your sale. We're not saying it's going to take six months to process. We're just suggesting that you allow yourself enough time as possible to address some of those issues that Sam highlighted, particularly with regards to DNA. Should there um, be a case where you need to do some resampling or we need to look at different sires for your animals. One of the biggest issues that we do deal with in the office is that a lot of people leave organising this information until the last minute and believe it or not, this includes registrations as well, which just doesn't leave any time to address these issues as they arise in order to get your catalogue out with enough time for prospective purchases to go through your animals. So while we have created this timeline, 
as we said, it's a guideline. Um, it is really important to be organised as early as possible. For example, while in most cases, DNA and genomic results will be returned within six to eight weeks of submission. I know I'm coming back to this again, but we just want to stress, we'd highly recommend conducting your DNA and genomic testing well in advance of this timeline. There are reasons behind this. Um, one of them is, first and foremost, you can promote your sale as either sire assured or parent assured. But not just that, you're providing integrity on your sale lots for the purchases. Getting this information back in time also means that that genomic information can be included in the taste analysis with plenty of time. Um, and I'll say it again, there is an Angus Essentials webinar on DNA technology, so highly recommend you go back and watch that. The same can be said for when submitting performance data for inclusion in the taste analysis. Members need to be aware of submission deadlines, which can be found on the Angus Australia website under the taste menu item, and where possible, not be submitting this data at the last minute if it can be avoided. Again, there's an essentials webinar also on taste that I'd highly recommend you watch. So submitting this information, the taste information, as, long, as well as your genomic information will ensure that you are providing that most up-to-date and accurate information to your prospective purchases. So coming back to our guidelines here, as we said, dates and timeframes may vary for individual members, but we always say work back from sale day as much as possible, look at when information should be provided, and I think you'll get the best experience when it comes to producing your sale catalogue. The other million dollar question we always get asked is timeframes for turnaround on catalogues. Sam went through the different scenarios, or sorry, the different services that we do offer. We do say to allow for two to three working day turnaround for a standard catalogue, and that's obviously provided that all the information we have received is correct and up to date, and all the animals are registered, registered. Um, which means a fairly quick turnaround and we're able to get that information back to you for use um, with your designer or printer. When it comes to our customised and full design, we do say to particularly in peak periods to allow for a seven to 10 working day turnaround because a lot of the information that we're processing here, once we've added it online um, and then pulled that information out, it is actually a manual process and we're customising or doing a full design for you. Um, so it is a timely process. So once again, we ask that all that information is submitted as early as possible um, and that everything's submitted at the same time so we can get a really good run with that catalogue. Um, we always sort of work on that, I guess, under promise and over deliver premise. And there are times where we are able to certainly, um, I guess, deliver catalogues uh, earlier than what we put in there, but we just want to give you a realistic time frame um, for what we can provide. As always, it comes back to that the sooner you're organised, the sooner we can look to process that catalogue for you. While I was talking about the guidelines just before, I briefly mentioned Sire Assured and Parentage Assured. And now what the Angus Parentage Assured program highlights is sale of semen catalogues listed by vendors who have invested in DNA testing for parentage verification. So effectively, they've improved the integrity of their pedigree, genetic condition, and TACE EBV information that is displayed for any of these animals or semen that they're offering for sale. And as you can see on the screen there, we do have the two different categories. We've got both Angus Sire Assured and Angus Parentage Assured. Angus Sire Assured applies to the sale of semen catalogues where all lots have been DNA sire verified while Parentage Assured applies to sale and semen catalogues where all lots have been DNA parent verified, so that's for both Sire and Dam. The way this program works is that um, the sale and semen catalogues will qualify as either of these categories, and that will mean that the relative uh, the, sorry, the relevant Parentage Assurance Program logo will automatically display um, in the catalogue listing. I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, but when it comes to a printed catalogue side of things, any catalogue uh, that we can see that qualifies for this program will provide you with those logos to also use within your printed catalogue. The other thing to note is that users of both Sales Select and Semen Select, which I touched on earlier in the presentation, 
um, those users uh, using those tools can actually limit the searches on their catalogs to any catalog or animal that only qualifies to one of those programs. So we do see it as a really valuable tool for providing integrity to your sale catalog or semen listing in particular. So on this slide, I'm just showing you a screen recording of some catalogs that we've currently got listed um, online with Angus Australia. And as you can see, we've got the Sire Assured and Parentage Assured logos popping up there beside each of those um, those catalogs. So they, as I said, this is automatically loaded when a catalogue is processed with Angus Australia and just provides some assurance to purchasers with regards to those programs when it comes to either knowing um, that the sires have all been verified for those animals or that both the sire and dam have been verified. So now that Sam and I have actually taken you through, I guess, the services that we offer and some of the preparation tips that can help you um, get all the information together and submit it to Angus Australia in order to process a catalogue with Angus Australia. I thought a really good way to sort of summarise this area before we move on to the advertising opportunities that are available is this frequently asked questions video that we put together probably roughly about 12 months ago that's still quite applicable um, to the way we operate now. So I'm just going to play this for you. This is available from the Angus Australia YouTube channel and also on our website but I just think it's a really good summary of the information that we've presented tonight. Everything we've referenced tonight with regards to big catalogues can be found in the catalogues and marketing section of the Angus Australia website. Um, so if you go into here and click onto catalogue services, you'll be taken through into the catalogues area where we cover off on all of the information and the resources that we spoke to you about earlier in this presentation. You can look at what's included on each of the catalogue um, services. You can look at the templates that we have available and what information is included on each template the examples of the templates and of course the very important forms and the Excel spreadsheet that we require you to complete. This is a really great resource if you're actually looking for everything and with our website refresh um, we've included all of this information in to try and keep it all onto one page so that you've got everything you need available in the one area. But of course if you do have any questions about this please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. Before we move on to an overview of the advertising opportunities available, we might just break now to see if anyone's got any questions uh, with relation to our sale catalogue services or some of the processes that we actually go through. Thanks, Di. Um, yes, we do. That's that's a lot of information. We do have a couple of questions. Um, they're all from Mark, who is a long-time uh, listener and viewer of uh, Angus Essentials. So welcome back, Mark. 
Um, so the first question Mark has is that um, he, he's asking is, are you saying, Di, that um, the breeder, uh, therefore member, needs to have all of the information on hand to build the catalogues, if, for example, the EBVs, pedigree, et cetera, et cetera, um, but engages Angus Australia uh, to purchase this service, not to just lift all that information from... I think what you're saying there, Mark, is that... Um, I think what Mark's getting at, Di, I should say, is that Angus Australia will pull um, things automatically out of the database, such as dates of birth, pedigree, um, the EBVs. So just to just to clarify that question, what would Mark have to supply you um, and what would Angus Australia automatically have access to as, as a summary? Yep. So, Mark, I have a sneaky suspicion I might actually end up answering your first question and your second question. Um, I'm sure that Jake will bring up if I don't um, with regards to the Excel spreadsheet as well. So, effectively, I actually might start with the Excel spreadsheet side of things. So, what we're saying that we want you to supply is prior to submitting your information for us to process for your catalogue, we don't need you to give us all of the pedigree and EBV information. What we're asking for you to do is just to make sure your animals are actually all firstly and foremostly um, registered with Angus Australia and that I guess any data that you want to contribute with information um, to go into your catalogue such as DNA and genomics and your um, I guess increasing your accuracy of your taste EBV, EBVs by submitting data as well that that has all been provided to Angus Australia before we start processing your catalogue because then that'll just speed up the process so to answer your question yes absolutely we can pull this information for your catalogue out easily for you provided all of the animals are registered and you've submitted all that previous data that's required. Um, again, it all depends on what service you are actually after from Angus Australia, which Sam went through those, um, through those different services that we have as to what you then require us to provide back to you. Now, the short answer to your question is, what do you need to give to us in order to process your catalogue? Well, first and foremost um, is obviously completing the form to tell us what you're after. Um, but in that Excel spreadsheet, all we're asking for is three columns to be completed. The first one is the lot number. So if you've got 50 bulls, that's literally going lots one to 50. Um, in the second column, we're just asking for the animal ident as it's recorded with Angus Australia. And then in the third column, if you're providing comments to go with your catalogue, then that's the information that we need from you. So if you're able to provide us that signed form and that completed Excel spreadsheet with those three columns of information, then that's the information we then use to put your catalog together. Um, now, Mark, I think, sorry, Jake, I'm actually gonna jump ahead because it, it sort of fits into um, Mark's second question where he's no just saying with regards to the Excel um, spreadsheet, Mark, I think you're sort of saying um, that maybe it was a bit harsh that we're saying we just need people to complete it properly and we can't change that for you. Um, it's probably more that we can actually only load a certain format into Angus Tech. So we really do need that to be completed correctly. Um, and obviously, if we start changing things for you, um, we're concerned that we might make errors that might not be picked up on. And we do like to have the member submitting the correct information to us to ensure we're actually loading what has been provided. Um, it just means that then mistakes are less likely to happen. Um, and we're obviously certainly more, more than happy to talk members through how to complete that spreadsheet. But as I said, we are just asking for three columns of information. So if we can stick to that, then it just makes a much easier process. But at the same time, um, you know, when people do submit spreadsheets through to us that might contain additional information or the IDANs aren't set up correctly, then one of the team from the marketing and comms um, team will come back to you and um, just work with you to complete that information correctly. That, that's great, Di. Um, I'd also just ask, just just as an add-on question, is there a minimum number of animals that uh, members need to create a catalogue? So, for example, someone has um, maybe two or three bulls or females they're looking to advertise and sell. Is that is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can process from one to 
um, I think at this stage, the biggest catalogue we've had is um, with females over 300 across different catalogues. I haven't looked in to see if there's an upper limit um, for that. But yeah, if someone has one bull that they would just like to pop up in that catalogue list and ensure it pops up in any searches across Angus Select, then, or female, of course, um, then yeah, certainly we can um, do that as well. That's great. And another question from Mark, um, just to clarify, uh, with um, parentage assured or sire assured, do all animals in that catalogue need to qualify for that result? Or if there's a couple that don't, does that then restrict um, that member using parentage assured or sire assured on the catalogue? Yes. So you do, it does apply to the whole catalogue. So in order to, um, for that logo to pop up automatically on your catalogue, say for Sire Assured, then that means that all 50 bulls or females in your catalogue or semen catalogue um, need to have been Sire Verified or the same for Parentage Assured. So if you happen to have a mix of animals that have been Sire Verified and Sire and Dam Parent Verified, then you'll still qualify for the Sire Assured one. You just won't qualify for the Parentage Assured um, logo, but then... People can see that information um, when you're clicking on an animal's details. Um, everyone should be aware now that that um, that suffix is now part of an animal's name. So a lot of you would have seen on the database or in catalogues where we either have the little SV or the PV um, suffix sitting um, in an animal's name. So that's another way people can see um, quickly and easily um, whether animals have been tested not and obviously that information shows up on angus tech as well um and, and so jake i'm not sure if you've yep. got anything you'd like to add to that because it's probably no, a little bit more in your area no that's that's perfectly um answered di so uh, in, in summary mark yes that's right um if there's if there's something that um doesn't pass um sci verification or parent verification it will restrict that um that program applying to the entire catalog um, so just just keep that in mind. But as Diana pointed out, that um, if it doesn't verify to a particular dam um, or you didn't request that um, to verify, but it still does to the sire, um, then it can at least fall back to sire verification on most occasions. Um, just one, one final question from Mark before we continue uh, with the rest of the presentation, which I think is a great question, maybe better directed to Sam Hamilton uh, if Sam is there. Uh, but read the full design catalogue service, uh, obviously the $6.60 per animal um, and quoting the $99 per hour for design time. Um, let's just say in a, in a perfect world, um, the average member has 10 to 20 bulls that they're looking to catalogue. How long would that take for a full design service, like in terms of time, just so people can get a bit of an idea of what that might cost? Yeah, thanks for your question, Mark. Um... The cost and time frame for putting something like that together, um, if we're talking 10 to 20 bulls, normally I can put something like that together within three to four days. Um, this is also in between other catalogues that I've had to do at the same time. So I've had like three full design ones on the go and still been able to manage to get that around in the three to four days. Um, price or well, time-wise as well, for how long it would take me to put it together over those three to four days, um, roughly about five hours. So that'd be the $99 per hour. And that's um, provided because we're basically going to be working from scratch. So the full cover design um, and then the template and adding the photos and, you know, whatever else you decide to do, shading and whatnot. Um, but then say next year, if you were to come back to us and get us to do the exact same thing again, the time would nearly be cut in half. So we're talking, it could nearly, I think I did one for a member and it took me an hour and a half to do. So it does vary um, on what you want and your amount of lots that you've got. So I hope that answers your question, um, Jake. Yeah, it, I think it. I think it does. So, yeah. um, so for that example, um, you know that you provided where it could take five or six hours. It could be you know five or six hundred dollars as a starting fee for year, for year one, and and um, with only subtle changes such as dates, etc., and then the automatic changes, obviously with the with the animal details. For the following year, there'd be some significant time savings there. So that's, I think that's a good ballpark, but I'd probably encourage Mark or anyone else listening that um, if you've got something uh, that you sort of want a bit of a quote on, like you know how many cattle they would be and what your 
kind of situation is in terms of if you've got something that's usable or not already, um, I would certainly encourage you to contact um, Diana's team, um, primarily Sam, but um, but any of the team just to to kind of get that quote so you can fully understand what um, some of those startup costs might be. Um, we might just keep, we might just, Thanks. yep. Sorry, I was just going to add quickly, like it is a bit of a how long's a piece of string question, but I think like anything, if you've got an idea of what you want, um, then we can do a really firm quote. Something we actually forgot to show in this presentation, which is in our catalogue section on the website, is examples of full design catalogues we have completed for other members. So we often um, push prospective um, people who are looking to use the service um, in that area just to have a look at what we have done previously and see what they like or don't like about um, some of the other catalogues that are available just to give us a bit more of an idea of what they're thinking. Fantastic. Thanks, Di. We might just keep pushing on. Um, of course, uh, if there's any more questions, please put them in the chat. We'll have time at the end of this webinar, of which there's um, there is a little bit further to go, but we're certainly well over halfway. Um, and so we might just keep going now and um, and see what, uh, what other content we're going to cover. So now we are moving on to those advertising opportunities we do have available for members of Angus Australia. And those of you that um, either follow our social media channels or are receiving our bulletin or our Angus Weekly um, email that comes out every Wednesday or go onto our website regularly, you should be very aware of the opportunities that we do have available to members. So I'll go through these briefly one by one, but as always, this information is available from the Angus Australia website. At the moment, our main advertising that we do offer is in the Angus Weekly, our bulletin advertising, which is obviously our print, and then our other digital option, which is our website advertising. The first part of our advertising I'm going to look at here is um, our print option that we offer members of Angus Australia, and that's the Angus Bulletin. So the Angus Bulletin, it's a quarterly publication mailed out to over 4,000 people each quarter. And it's used, I guess, as a really big promotional tool for the Angus breed. We contain industry news and interviews, our latest breed development initiatives and stories on genetic improvement, Angus Youth, the Sci Benchmarking Program, updates on success um, with the use of Angus genetics around Australia and obviously anything else that we think is relevant. In each issue, which I just showed you there on that screen recording, we do have an advertisers index and I'll just flick you through, I guess, another couple of pages that just give you an indication of the different size options that we do offer um, members of Angus Australia. Um, as you can see, we do create this into a digital version, which we publish on the website across our social media and is also promoted by the Angus Weekly. So it really is a great tool to be used by members when it comes to promoting, um, I guess, your upcoming sale or other, I guess, other events that you might be ha happening on your place. On this slide is just a very brief overview of the different size options and that we do offer members for advertising in the bulletin to basically allow just for different budgetary requirements or restrictions that people may have when it comes to promoting your upcoming event, your sale, or your private treaty animals that you've got for sale at home. So as you can see, there are a number of different options available here for you to actually consider. Um, and the other thing to probably, that is really important to note is that we do also offer graphic design services or alternatively, you can provide your advert print ready. We would highly recommend touching base with us if you do have any questions with regards to this. So the next part of the advertising opportunities that we do have available for members to use that I wanna show you and take you through are our digital advertising opportunities. A lot of you have probably been onto the Angus Australia website and seen that we do have advertising here on the home page of the website across the top and of course across the bottom as well. Um, when you go into the internal pages of the website, this advertising also appears on those. Um, the standard size here is what we, an industry size called an MREC. Um, we also have a digital advertising in the Angus Weekly and we have two different size options available for advertising here. We've got a long banner and um, the smaller MREC version as well. And when you click on any of these ads, either in the weekly or the Angus Australia website, they will take you through to um, the member's website or to a sale listing. And we do find that they're a very valuable add-on when it comes to advertising your sale catalogue with Angus Australia. 
And just like with our sale catalogue services, everything you need to know with regards to our advertising opportunities can be found on the Angus Australia website under the catalogues and marketing tab. So if you just go into here and then click on to our advertising option, it lists all the available opportunities that are there for you. Um, it lists all the prices and everything um, else that you need to know with regards to advertising with Angus Australia. And like we always say, if you do have any questions about this, please do not hesitate to get in contact with us. And another area that we probably haven't touched on um, at this point in time, and I've briefly mentioned throughout this that we do actually offer graphic design services to our Angus Australia members. Um, this is a really great service. So if you do want to get in touch with us for, I guess, your one-stop shop, please don't hesitate and we can take you through what is available. Our cost to conduct graphic design for our members is $99, including GST or part thereof. For 18 months we've been offering graphic design services to our members and we've seen a huge amount of growth in that. We offer everything from logos to sale catalog design and complete rebrands. We can help with everything from their website and Fairfax advertising, organising things for social media, to anything that goes in your videos. We can absolutely help you for everything. The final thing we do need to touch on here tonight is who to contact with regards to any of our marketing and communication services we offer in line with sale catalogues and advertising opportunities. So if you just head to the Angus Australia website, and go to the staff section of the website under about will take you through to where you can find the marketing and comms team under marketplace services. Your main contact when it comes to sale catalogues will either be Sam Hamilton or Zintra Menesis and then at times Kate Reynolds will also help out with catalogues in those peak periods. Graphic design is Ebony Jones and when it comes to booking advertising with Angus Australia, Robin Brazier or Shane Twist are your go-tos. And of course, if you've got any other questions with regards to marketing and comms, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me, Diana Wood. So now that we've gone over our advertising opportunities, we'd just like to see if there's any questions um, that may have popped up during the presentation with regards to advertising, or of course, any other questions that you may have with regards to anything that we have presented here tonight, or anything you could be interested in with regards to marketing and communications that you think we may have missed. Well done, Di. There's a lot of a uh, lot of information there to unpack, and um, I'm sure there should be a few questions coming through with um, with all of that. But um, there's nothing quite on the chat at the moment, so we do we do have time. If you would um, uh, have any burning questions or points of clarification, um, or what to do what to do next, please put them um, please put them in the chat, and we can get them answered for sure. Um, the only other thing um, that we do have to do, um, and we really do appreciate, um, is just some feedback on um, this particular episode of the Angus Essentials webinar series. So you'll have a poll that's popped up on your screen, and there's just a couple of questions that we would really appreciate your um, your feedback on. If you could please um, yeah, place your feedback into those questions. Um, that would be fantastic. That should have come up on your screen right now. Um, and once we get through those, uh, we do have a couple of questions that have come in and we'll, um, we'll get those answered. So Di, just while that is happening, uh, we do have a question that's come in from Lex. G'day Lex from Western Australia, how are you? Um, how can you be featured on Angus Australia's socials, Instagram, Facebook, etc.? Great question. Alex, uh, thank you for that question. So the main things you probably notice that we do promote across our social media channels for our members, um, first and foremost is anyone with a catalogue listed online with Angus Australia. Um, in the lead up to the sale, we will promote that sale and provide a direct link to users of our social media channels um, to access that online sale catalogue. Um, we also promote our full design catalogues um, on uh, our social media channels. So we'll create a, a just a quick, I guess it's a GIF um, that sort of just flicks through the catalogue that's been created by Angus Australia. Um, and we'll put that up, tag the member and also um, share both um, the 
digital version or the ebook, for want of a better word, as well as the link to the online database catalog. And the other way we do share information for our members is anyone who books website or the weekly advertising with us, we will share that MREC across our Facebook page as well. And Di, just, just to um, add on to that, um, I know a, a little bit about cows and a little bit about genetics and nothing about social media, but I do notice that some uh, individual members might have their own um, pages or their own social media accounts. How can they best engage with Angus Australia um, to kind of, um, you know, you might elaborate on it, but, you know, pick up on each other's audience and share their stories type thing. Have you got any comments around that? Um, I think the best thing we can encourage our members to do if you're sharing individual stories on um, social media is to make sure you always tag Angus Australia. So first and foremost, we can see that that's happening because as for those of you that are on social media, I'm sure you open up your feed and often wonder why you see some things and not others. So if you're not tagging Angus Australia, we're not seeing what you're sharing um, and not getting an opportunity to interact with that. And that's one big thing I will say, like they do, do call it social media for a reason. The whole idea is that you're meant to be social on there. So you're meant to interact with other people's content, whether it's commenting or sharing or even just liking. That makes a big difference to making your story or what you want to share going far and wide. Now, while we won't share other people's content onto our pages, we will certainly um, like any posts that are obviously relevant and that we've been tagged in. So I, I do think it's really important to interact with other social media pages. Great advice. Um, thanks. Thanks, Di. We do just have a couple more people needing to fill out that uh, that poll that's up on your screen. So we would appreciate if you do that. Um, a question that's coming from Mark, another great question from Mark. Well done. Um, Di, do you have any stats or insight um, figures around the Angus Australia advertising reach? Um, just generally or, or different components and um, also I suppose the reach to members versus non-members or I think Mark's just trying to gauge uh, how far does our media and publications get? Uh, Mark that is a tricky question for me to answer um, here tonight without having any of those stats in front of me. Um, what I can tell you is for example um, the Angus Weekly so our EDM that goes out every Wednesday, um, we send that out to, I think at the moment, it's almost 9,000 people um, across a mix of members and non-members with Angus Australia. Um, the bulletin, uh, I think I said it goes out to 4,000 people um, and we also put that online. But in terms of views and reach, I'd need to actually look into those stats a little bit more to give you, I guess, a decent um, answer with regards to that. Yeah, Di, do you, this is putting you on the spot. Do you have any idea of um, how many people kind of reach our uh, online sale catalogs um, the, in terms of the traffic that reaches that part of the website? Yeah, well, that was, uh, I think, up until the end of September, we'd had 247,000 hits on that, so it had grown by 10%. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and that's one thing that, that always kind of blows my mind is that, you know, we have, um, say, nearly 4,000 members, um, there's a, you know, hundred thousand cows in our inventory. Um, and yet we have a substantially higher number of, um, general, um, beef breeders, uh, interested parties, um, you know, um, people from all walks of life that are interacting with cattle advertised for sale. Um, as you said, 240,000 individual views of our sale catalogs this year. Um, I might also add that, you know, we exceed 1 million individual animal searches um, on our database as well, which is just extraordinary. So I think one thing I've um, certainly uh, felt that's been reinforced in your presentation, Diana, is um, that if you're not, you know, doing some advertising or maybe don't have an online sale catalog, um, there's a potential that you might miss some of that traffic, to be honest. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, and that's the big thing we're trying to achieve. So with any of, um, I guess, the general communications that we do across, um, say, our social media channels in the weekly, um, we're always driving traffic back to the website. We always try to get people to at least land on the website. So 
you sort of actually hope they're going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit and take the bait and start clicking through when they're going to see your advertising and then they're going to click through to catalogs. So I guess everything we do do now in the general marketing and communications area is always about driving people back to the Angus Australia website in order to obviously give our members more exposure. Mm, fantastic. And I think that's a great point probably to finish on um, unless there was any final um, final questions. Mark's just saying you can't see the feedback form. Hopefully everyone else is um, going okay. The poll polls come up and I think we've got pretty much most people in there, which is great. Um, but look, just in closing, uh, we at Angus Australia would just really sincerely like to thank everyone that has joined us over um, the last six months. We've been running these webinar um, series and uh, we've had two this month. So September's very lucky. And just like to thank also Diana Wood, uh, Marketing and Communications Manager from Angus Australia for your contribution tonight, um, but all, also always. Um, and also Sam Hamilton, who is um, just a maestro at putting together um, the sale catalogs for Angus Australia and um, has doing a fantastic job from what I hear around the country with our members. So that's fantastic. Of course, if you'd like any more information um about tonight's uh, topics please contact any of the staff that um, that diana went through including diana they would be more than happy to help i would also add that uh, in the coming days this particular webinar will be up on the angus australia youtube um, page and you'll be able to re-watch um, this entire webinar and you'll also find the other six webinars on there as well on the Angus Essentials um, playlist uh, under the Angus Australia YouTube channel. And there's also, you know, it goes without saying, um, a depth of other um, stuff on there that are a, co a combination of educational and, um, and interesting videos that we've put together over time. But thank you very much for joining us. Um, we hope that you have a, um, have a great end of the week and a long weekend if you get one in your state. And um, if, of course, if we can never be of any assistance, please get in contact. That's why we're here. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jake.